Welcome to part two of my video series about the vanishing point system for virtual production with Unreal Engine. This part is about mounting everything to my camera. You will see my very fancy virtual production automated jib system. Just kidding. Yes, I will show it to you, but it's, it's a crazy setup. So you will see this and we will connect everything, get ready so that we can start shoot. Mount everything to the camera, to the tripod, connect it to the PC, install the software. Do the calibration of the system so that we are ready in the next video to shoot. Also, if you are serious about virtual production or if you just want to get to know my complete workflow, check out the link below in the description where I have a free course, a free virtual production course for you. Okay, let's start with the installation of the hardware. You can see I have my camera here, I have some tape and I have this alley key here. For those of you guys who are now checking out which lens I'm using and why I have these lens rings, I don't recommend using this lens. It's a great lens, but it's not great for virtual production because of this infinity focus. It's a comprehensive topic. It's not only because of the infinity focus, um, but I talk more about this in my free course. The link is down in the description. So let's open the box and see what we need there and what we get there now. So I want to start with the Intel sensor with a smaller sensor. This is the sensor I'm using most. When we get into the shooting part, I will also show you why I'm using this most. So I need this cable for the sensor. I need this mount here for the camera. I need this long USB extension. And later I will use this floor plane here and before for calibration purpose, also this board here. So I got my camera, I start with the mount. Here's a small detail and that's one of the reasons why I'm using the Blackmagic Design Pocket 4K camera over a DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera. You may laugh, but it's this mount. Well, this is the movie industry. Well, this is the film industry, this is the standard and I can immediately mount this guy here. For example, a DSLR camera or mirrorless camera, they always have this mount here. So small but great reason for the Blackmagic Pocket Camera. And you will see this later in the software. There's also a preset for this camera because when we are mounting the sensor now here, that's just a simple click, sorry, in this direction. And when we mount this sensor here, there's just a simple click. We can already see something what the software is doing later. For example, this is our lens. In my case, it has a 12 by 35 millimeter focal length, but this is not the real focal lens that's really happening. So because this is the lens, the sensor is somewhere here inside the camera, but our tracking sensor is here. And also there's a height difference. Here's the lens, the middle of the lens. Here's the middle of the sensor. These are all informations the software, the vanishing point software needs to understand and to really align virtual and real world. And this is something I will show you in the software later as well. And there's a preset for this camera that comes with the vanishing point software. It's a small detail, but yeah, for people like me who want to start shooting, that's great. You have the camera, you mount the sensor and then you select the preset. And of course you have some, to do some calibration work to do some fine tuning but it just accelerates the process. So you also want to make sure that this is straight, of course. And I think we're good to go now with the Intel sensor. Next, I will mount my camera here on this Ilkron Head Plus. This is like an automated mini jib and I also do have a slider and yeah, you can automate this one. Well, I'm not really recommending it because it's just not powerful enough for the camera. Maybe this one advantage for you since I don't do sponsorships as a YouTuber, I want to tell my honest opinion on this. It's one of these guys I have a love-hate relationship with. No, so I try to see the good things and it's fun and if it's more mirrorless camera or DSLR, you can use it. But for virtual production with all the sensors and cables and tracking, it's just too heavy and it's and this jib is just not powerful. Okay, but I will use it because I'm a one-man show. I'm alone in front of the camera and I want to show when the camera moves that everything yeah, works. So let's mount this here. We are off to make sure that it's here really aligned just to have this ill crown system to perform as good as possible. Now a small but very important detail. I mount this USB extension here on this position. 
I used to have it on the side because it's very heavy and I thought, okay, I have my Ale Crown jib not to put too much weight here, but it doesn't look like this, when, but when I connect this and just let it hang here, it's losing this connection here. So not really completely, but just a small, but that was enough that the sensor always lost connection to the PC. And I was wondering what's happening. I thought maybe one USB port of my PC is broken, but no, it was just because I did this. And for some reason, there must be like a tiny bit too much and it loses the connection. So very important, mount this here. Let's have a look at the other side. So this is how it looks. So the rest of this cable is pretty light. It's very, very light. It just can hang down. Or I will just align it here along my jib. So that's fine. And maybe you can remember the other side of this USB cable has two ports, two USB-A ports, just to support this 50 feet length or 25 feet length. So let's plug these two guys in here side by side. One, two, great. So Vector is connected, the hardware, the Intel sensor. So we would be ready to go and start with this kind of tracking for the camera movement. But I also want to do the tracking of the focal length of the zoom and also of the focus. And so it's time for the Viper. So this one of my two Viper sensors, it really doesn't care if I mount it like this or like this direction. We um, will check this when we do the calibration. But because of my setup here with this idle crone and I have limited space, I have to put it like this so that this the wheel is on the front because there's some kind of a space here. And for example, if I would mount it like this here, this piece is just too short and this is part of the idle crone head. And yeah, so I have limited space available. And maybe you can see this here. I have also some gaffer because it was too small. So maybe three layers of gaffer. Now it seems like too big. So let's mount this here. And the first sensor is connected. Of course, we need the cable, connect this. And each cable, each plug hey, brings more weight here to my head. Align this cable along my jib and get my next wiper. And this one is corrected here to this focus module from Edel Crown. So in case you haven't heard about it, so this is my, my robot for focus. So this ring here, I can't move it. This is motorized and will control my focus. And this is also the reason why I needed this infinity ring here. So because I have wheels on both sides of the wheel. So, but again, I don't recommend my lens here, my X-Vario 2.8 by 35 millimeter. And these are cool looks focus rings that are made for this lens. I recommend getting a manual focus lens that has no acceleration of the focus. I will definitely soon get another lens because this lens drives me crazy. It's a great lens, but not for virtual production. And so here, this whole idea with my Edel Crone motor and tracking, uh, it just doesn't work that. How I would love it to work. Long story short, I have my focus motor and here, this is all one piece, this and this. And that's great because it gives me space for my second wiper sensor. I already mounted it here. And I, <laughs> can you see how less space it has? And it really can't have more. It was just the biggest accident that could ever happen. It works exactly like there was not two millimeters uh, too much space or too less. So let's plug this in here. So that the motor controls my focus ring that's tracked here. And the other wiper sensor is now connected here to my zoom lens. I mean, can you see this here from the side? So this is my zoom lens, my focal length. This is my second Viper. This is the motorized Edel Crown connected to my focus ring here. And here's the other Viper sensor. Yeah, perfect. And this can't move here right now because it's controlled by this and this motorized and the motor, yeah, makes it stuck. So we have more cables here. My second wiper is now also connected. The USB cable on the other side that comes into my PC. And the Edel Crown has also this cable, which it will be connected to my head plus here to the back. 
So let's bring this to the front and plug this into the focus head. So it's a paradise. This is just another piece of this focus head. This is just power. So, and now we have HDMI. Um, this is a little tricky here now. I mean, can you see this? This is my HDMI port here now. Very hard to reach, but again, very lucky. It's not a single millimeter too much or too less. For some reason, luck made it good with me and it worked. So HDMI is here. We have one more. This is the power for my Blackmagic camera. Definitely nothing you want to do every day. So the last time I did this is a couple of months ago and I only unplugged everything because of this video here. So last but not least, it has also nothing to do with the tracking system, but I want to show you that I will mount something else here. This is my time code generator, my Tentacle Sin E. I have this here prepared and just stick it to the camera. It looks very fancy. It's made in my hometown in Germany, so happy to have this here. And this is just plugged into my microphone in line in. Yeah, well, this is just how you bring time code into the pocket camera here. Works very well. And now you know my setup of my camera here. So let's follow some cables. So first of all, my HDMI cable here follows along my jib here. It still looks a little messy. I will clean this a little up but this is how it looks like. So here it goes on the side of my tripod. You can see two devices. First, let's have a look at this. So this is where my HDMI cable is plugged into from the camera. It, not, it does not go immediately into my deck link card into the PC, but here into this converter. And this is an HDMI to SDI converter. So I'm changing cables. Why I'm doing this is something yeah, we are discussing in my free course. It's a little more comprehensive. So let's plug this back in. This guy is also powered here. It needs some power. And when we talk about power further below, you can see I have here multiple plugs. Um, yeah, power for the HMI converter, but also here this is the camera. And these guys are all for the Edelkron. I think I need three or four power adapters. And that's the real reason why everything looks so messy because this needs power. This guy needs power. This guy needs power. In the advertising, they make this always with batteries. Yeah, but this is just not a solution. If I have to pay too attention to six batteries while I'm shooting and then I will add another battery to my Blackmagic camera. Okay, that's it for the setup here. Let's have a look at the PC. I have my two wiper USB cables here plugged side by side at the back. Simply, I want to avoid breakage of the cable yeah, as much as possible because this is how it looks like. Yeah, I think it's very sensitive. Plug this also in, both Vipers are connected. And now the hardware is ready to go, Viper and Vector. Of course, I'm getting the question at the beginning again and again, Vector is the software and the system for the camera tracking and Viper is the software and the sensor here for the tracking of the focus ring and the zoom.